What's going on guys, McRaptor here back in Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. This time we're fighting the Great Shinobi Owl Boss in Ashina Castle. In this video, we will break down everything that you need to know so that you can put this owl down for good. First, let's break down his main attacks, which are primarily slash combos that he'll use throughout the fight. He also will commonly throw shuriken at you and occasionally follow up with a jump attack. Right after that, as you can see here, if you're able to get behind him, which is pretty easy, you can get a lot of damage in, so it's actually a great damage opportunity when he uses those. He'll also throw out a green orb that will stop you from healing for a space of time, and somewhat rarely he'll also use firecrackers, which can stun you just as yours do, and you don't want to get hit by that. Throughout the fight, you're also going to have to very effectively manage your posture bar. If it gets too high, you might want to get out of the action for a little bit of time. The problem with that, though, is if you aren't in the boss's face, he starts using a lot of different charge attacks, so you need to be ready for those when you disengage. Now that we've gone over his basic attacks, let's go over some positioning, which is incredibly important. As you can see here, I am in the boss's face, which is pretty much where you want to be as much as possible. Whenever you can, reposition to right in front of him so that you can limit the amount of things that he's actually going to throw at you, which makes the fight much more predictable. That's not to say you can't go off script a little bit, but this is a more effective and more predictable way to take the boss out. Try to get right up in his face when he does these jump attacks. Of course, you want to punish those. I also recommend when he throws out the green orb, use that as an opportunity to damage the boss. Don't worry about you not being able to heal for that space of time. If you're doing it correctly, you shouldn't need to heal anyways, and the boss can one or two shot you with a lot of attacks. Focus on your deflections and don't worry so much about the healing ball. One thing that I'm doing here that is incredibly effective on, on this fight, in addition to staying up close, is to try to punish any time that he does a step back. And as you can see, he's done a couple here, and he's going to continue to do it throughout the course of the fight. Whenever he does a step back, try your best to punish him. Also, you can punish when he's running at you because your attacks generally land faster than most of his. So, if he's running at you, like right there, you can punish. And if he steps back, like right there as well, you can also punish. So those are some big punish opportunities for you if you are dominating the position of the fight. You can also use Firecracker to force positioning and give yourself a little bit of space of time, especially if your posture is getting too high. So to recap, phase one's about learning the deflect timing, staying up close to the boss, and punishing the step backs and the charges. Luckily, most of what you learned in phase one still applies in phase two. The major differences being that he uses a smoke screen that makes it difficult to see him, and he also has a poison bomb that restricts a portion of the platform for your positioning. The Poison is probably the worst to deal with because it does affect how well you can get up in his face and continue to punish the step backs and the charges, but it does go away, as you can see, after just a little space of time. So basically, you want to perform as you were in phase one, where you're staying up in his face, you're punishing things like this, you're making sure to deflect as many combo attacks as you can and really stay as close as you can to the boss as possible. If you can push him against the edge of the platform, that's also helpful to get him in a nice combo loop where you're able to deflect quite a bit and then get a lot of step back damage on him as well. You wanna try your best not to get poisoned. Of course, if, if you have an antidote, you can use it mid fight and that's okay. But look at these step backs here. Like he's in a nice loop here. Then he does the jump attack, and that's very easy to punish as well. His posture's getting up quite high. Uh, I will say that when he throws out the green anti-healing pump, it's a little deceiving. It looks like an attack. It still tricks me every damn time. So I, I'm always waiting to respond to it. But if you can recognize that that's coming out, you can probably get at least two attacks in each time that he tries to do that. But again, he keeps trying to charge in, and we keep hitting him first. And right here, he's going to try to heal his posture, but he's not able to do that because we knew what he was going to do. And we used some shuriken to stop him from healing his posture. You don't have to do that. At this point in time, his vitality is so low that his posture would build back up without a lot of trouble. But if you think about it, do throw out a couple shuriken in case he tries to block you. Well, that's pretty much the fight, guys. So, Great Shinobi Owl, pretty tough boss, but... If you follow the strategy of staying in his face, punishing his step backs and charge attacks, and just learning pretty good deflection timing, you should get him down 
within a few tries, hopefully. If you have any questions, of course, drop them in the comments. Also, if you guys like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We will see you next time.